So let's talk about how to install the DHCP server role in PowerShell. So from PowerShell, it's just an add or install Windows feature. So it's add, get on the right screen here, add Windows feature. And that's not going to work. Add dash Windows feature. That'll work better. Add Windows feature, DHCP. And then um, if I'm doing this on something where I'm going to need the management tools, I'm going to do the include management tools as well. And that will install all of the tools that we'll use to manage DHCP. If I don't need those, that's not a big deal. I don't have to worry about it. But went ahead and did it real quick anyway. So this installation actually doesn't take that long. You can see we're already more than 60% of the way through it. So the DHCP server is pretty quick and easy. We'll wait for it to finish here. Now, if you remember, when we install DHCP from the GUI, we get a little warning in server manager saying, hey, you need to do some... Uh, some post installation tasks and we have to install or do those post installation tasks in order for DHCP to function well this doesn't give us that now it says we installed successfully that's true exit code success restart needed no all that's great but it doesn't include those additional tasks so those are things that we're gonna have to manually do now the first thing is we have to add DHCP server security groups because that's not done automatically. But we do have a little commandlet that does it for us so we don't have to manually add them. The commandlet is add DHCP server security group. And by default, this doesn't create any output. It goes in, it adds the groups, it just does it. Um, if there's a problem, it will tell us. We can do a dash verbose if we want it to talk to us. Um, and that tells us what we're going to do. Um, so that's done. Now the other thing, there's two more things that the script does for, or that the uh, server manager process does for us. One is it lets DHCP know that it's completely configured. But again, we don't have that done. So we're going to have to do that. And that is done by changing the property of an item in the registry. So let's start by looking at it. Uh, we're going to do a get item property, which is how we want to view the properties of a specific item. And the path is going to be hklm, which is hklocalmachine, colon, which says go to that PowerShell drive. So hklocalmachine backslash software backslash Microsoft backslash server manager backslash roles backslash and this DHCP is number 12 and what did we mistype HKLM software Microsoft server manager roles 12 And I am not seeing my typo, but it says it can't find HKLM. Okay, let's go see if we can get to it manually. So let's go to set location HKLM backslash software backslash Microsoft backslash server manager and do a get child item or GCI and there is roles so let's set location roles and do a get child item and there is number 12 so let's get item property 12. Hey there we go all right it didn't like it when I typed in the whole path, but we found it manually. Now you'll notice that the configuration state here is set to one. That means it's not configured correctly. So I'm going to change that value to two. So I'm going to do that using the set item property, set item property, and then I'm going to specify 
Um, the path is going to be 12. The property name is going to be configuration state. And I'm going to set it to a value of 2. Now, if I do my get item property again, configuration state should be 12. So we're back to normal. So I'm going to go back to set location C colon just so I'm not sitting here in the registry. All right, so now we set the configuration state. Now, two more things we need to do. We need to add the server, authorize the server in the domain controller. Because remember, Microsoft server DHCP servers will not pass out addresses unless they've been authorized by Active Directory. So the command is just add DHCP server in DC. And then I can specify the specific DC or domain controller if I want. But since I'm sitting on one, I can just do that command and that will authorize it in the current DC. And then last but not least, let's restart service DHCP server. And that will restart our server with our DHCP service with all of the settings that we've just put into place. So where it's for DHCP server to start gives us that a couple of times. That goes away, which means we should be good. We can verify it by saying git service DHCP server. And our DHCP server is now running and should be completely configured. So there we go. We have uh, added or installed the DHCP uh, server service, configured it, and it should be ready now for us to add a DHCP scope. That's going to be the focus of our next video.